Hi guys, I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilt and I am at Fat Quarter Shop preparing for you a block of the month. Oh, I am so excited. We just finished our first block and I see you guys are doing a great job on it. Many of you have enjoyed it. It's time for block number two, Together Forever. Stick with me and we're gonna go right through that one. We're gonna first choose our fabrics and in the directions, write the first thing in your pattern in the book, you're gonna find uh, which fabric to use. We're gonna do a red, pink, and two lights. So I have my fabrics pressed, ready to cut. And I wanna cut with you this time. The first two pieces that we're gonna cut are rather simple. They're just low squares, uh, E, red ones g is gonna be a larger square so nice and simple remember when you're cutting your pieces follow the ruler trim it follow the grid when you're matching it up always match not only the measurements of whatever you need but match the line so that way you get a really good square i always pay attention and make sure i have at least two line matching with the sides of my uh, square when i cut very important so squares are cut now we're gonna cut a unit called quarter square triangle and that unit is cut from a square as well so once you cut a square Next, you're going to take your ruler, you're going to position 45 degree line, notice 45 degree line, right on the edge, and then you're going to check if this is point to point, and you're going to cut it once diagonally, without trying to move everything, you're going to take your ruler, lift it up, reposition, look at this, again, match 45, not only point to point, but also double check that you have some line making sure that you're cutting a really nice on 45 right here, point to point. And now I have just cut, well, I should have pressed it a little harder. Oh, didn't press it hard enough. So here magically I have one already cut for you. Right here, yes. You know, my hands are stretching all the way to that frame, so it's a little bit harder. When I cut at home, I have everything a little closer to me. But once you cut it, you'll be able to separate the pieces just like this. And this unit called four quarter square triangle. And something that I want to remind you that it's super important. When you're making a block, remember, never bias on the outside of your block, on the outside of your row, on the outside of your quilt. What that means is that when you're cutting units like half square triangle or quarter square triangle, there are bias edges. And in this case, there bias edges right here and right here so when we put this to the unit we have a straight grain edge right here and that's exactly what we need for our pieces that we're going to use for cutting the block so a is quarter square triangle as well as d will be quarter square triangle so i better put things to the side i'm so excited we have few more pieces to cut the next one let's cut b and b is cut from a square so look at it i have a square and again this time i only need a half square triangle so what i'm going to do i'm gonna place my ruler notice it straight grain right here uh, a 45 degree line matching the side of my square take her um rotary and cut from point to point once diagonally did you see this time i pressed it nice and hard and oh before I pull it away, I'm going to make sure I cut it all the way. Yes. Okay, I did it. So this is 45 degree and it is two half square triangle. See the difference between quarter square triangle and half square triangle? Half square triangle, two sides straight grain, one side bias. Quarter square triangle, we would have cut twice diagonally. For this, we only need it once and we're going to make few of those and that is going to be B. Another one is a smaller square C, and C also is cut half square triangles. And then we have a F, and now F is 
half square triangles as well. You have a great practice in cutting your quarter and half cross triangles. You're ready for the assembly. So did you notice I'm using now a ruler? It's four and a half by 12 and a half. This ruler works fantastic for what we're going to do because it's not too big and I was able to easily find a 45 degree angle right here in the middle and give me long enough room here that I was able to cut it. So that one works really nice. Our block is made from units and the first unit that we're going to make is this one and it is made from quarter square triangle, quarter square triangle and a half square triangle. We're gonna sew this to this then add this to it. Notice it, when I sew this to this, triangle this to this, I then gently finger press it. I notice that if I take my iron and place it right over this, this like to stretch. So I keep my iron away from it. I finger press or use a little tool. Maybe you have a, a old antique little pressing, cold pressing tool. I try not to put my iron to it. Then I take this, place it right over, match it up. And when I'm sewing, I keep this seam in the bottom because when I start stitching, zoom, 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 this doesn't turn over and it's very nice and easy to do it. As soon as I finish this unit, it's gonna look this way and our handy four and a half low square ruler is gonna come in place because I wanna position that ruler. Let me turn it around so that way you see it. Look at that. I match 45 degree line right here in the middle of my unit and I can take my little, um, I have to stand up on my tippy toes to get to do that. Here I'm gonna position really nice and trim it, trim it, turn around and do one more trimming on this side. Right there, look at this. I always square up all my units before I put them into the block. So this is unit number one and you're gonna make four of those for our block. The next unit that we have to make is made from half square triangle, two small light half square triangles and a square. Those are the pieces we're gonna need for it. We're gonna start by sewing this to this. And what I like to do, I take it, put it right sides together, just like this, and I'm gonna start stitching from here straight down. Why do I start right here? Because I can perfectly match those edges. Sew it straight down, open it up, then I'm gonna add this side to it. I have one prepared for you. So look at it, I sew first one, then second one, again, match, match, and this time I'm gonna flip this unit. First, I pinned it, pin it in place, and I'm using a really nice fine glass head uh, pins. I absolutely love them. I keep them a little bit further away from my stitch line and I'm gonna flip this and stitch on this side. Why am I doing that? Because I want this seam to lay towards me so when my machine come to it, it doesn't turn it over for me. It just beautifully goes down and I can control it. And also this piece right here is my fresh piece so I follow it, that fresh piece. Sew it as soon as I finish here, gentle press, finger press, it's staying beautifully down. All that I need to do is add another triangle to it. I'm gonna place my triangle right over here and I like to pin and I will grab this side, pin it, notice how I pin it to the point, then this side, pin it. Why am I doing that? Because sometimes maybe this got stretched a little bit as you were working on it. It's fabric, so that happens. So I want to make sure that I match my points to my freshly cut triangle. And this time I'm going to keep everything up this side because as I'm stitching, I want to make sure that I go through this 
X marks the spot. It's the spot where your needle should be going down. And speaking of a needle, many of you were so excited about sewing your first block, and I mentioned to you that I like to use Macrotex needles. I use Macrotex 70. It's very nice, fine needle, and it works beautifully with our Aurofil threads. And if you did not notice it, we have a beautiful selection of Aurofil threads. The small box would be perfect for you to start with it. There are nice uh, lighter colors for just the regular piecing, or if you want to match to the color of the fabric, we have a great selection of pinks and reds. And if this box is not big enough, guess what? I got a bigger box for you. And I have to tell you, I went for the bigger box because right there through that middle, you have like staple for quilters. All of your beiges, taupes, the lights, those are just the most wonderful. And I absolutely love the 2001. That is a, one of my personal favorites for this particular quilt. The thread is weight 50. It wor works great with needle size 70. It's gonna stitch beautifully. Okay, enough talking, let's sew. Many of you are gonna ask me, do you pull your pins out? I notice how I put them away from where I'm estimate going to sew. So I don't even worry about them. I just worry about keeping my quarter inch seam allowance. And some of you are gonna ask me, what do I do about those guys? If you would like to trim them, especially if you're following quarter inch foot, you know, the foot that has a little lip on it. So that is gonna grab that. So I would like you to trim it. I don't have that foot. I use just regular foot. So I go straight down and then when it's finished, I go ahead and trim those bunny ears away. So it's up to you. Roll with the punches as you're sewing. As soon as you finish, you're gonna notice X marks the spot, pull your pins out, and your next unit is finished. And what you're gonna do when you finish the unit? You're gonna take a ruler, you're gonna place it right over, and you're gonna do some trimming and squaring up the units. As soon as you finish four of those, that's how many you need for one block. We are ready to proceed into laying out our whole block. I am so excited. But remember, before you jump to it, trim, trim, trim. You want your new units beautifully trim and always lay your block front of you to make sure that everything is positioned in the right places. I love doing that checking, yep, I did a nice job. Oh, if something, oh, this one is not trim. Look at, perfect. I get to do it in front of you. So do you see how I sometimes forget things? It's perfect. Oh, notice it. Match, match, but even more, most important when you're trimming, that middle line right there, 45 degree needs to be in the middle of your unit. I'm gonna get on my tippy toe so I can see it. Trim it, beautiful, flip it, clean up my station, make sure it's nice and clean. Oh, this came out nice. Thank you, Lord. I would have been embarrassed in front of you guys if it didn't. So right here, I just finished this one. I'm gonna have to do some housekeeping and cleaning after this block. You're gonna be making eight of those blocks for your quilt. That's how many we need. And look at the center. Wow, this looks so nice. I love the pinks and reds combination, don't you? The red and white quilts are very striking. Adding that little pink to it makes the quilt super vintage and very delicate. And speaking of fabric, remember, big print, medium print, small print, some kind of stripe, some kind of polka dots, and you have that in your selections of fabrics that we did it for you. So now, Let's sew our blocks into three rows. Then we're gonna sew the rows together. This time, we're gonna push the seam allowances in the middle row towards the center. Those seam allowances gonna go towards outside, towards outside. Then we're gonna lock the seams. And remember, pin, 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 pin. 
those tiny little pins going to be so nice and handy when you're sewing. When I place my pieces right sides together, I put my pins just like this and you can do one in the beginning and one in the end just like this zoom 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 pull the pins out as you're coming towards it if you're not planning to do that make sure you put them far away from the seam on this side and it's still gonna hold it in place but in this case i'm going to just pull them as i sew flip it up and press it and now i'm ready to put my second block into my quilt together forever remember you have to make eight of those. Those are in the corners of the quilt, framing those cute little stardusts. Thank you so much and I look forward to see you again.